Thanks for checking out this movie review. Sorry, my voice just cracked there. <laughs> um, let's dig into Phantom of the Paradise. And yes, this is actually my very first time seeing the film, even though it is from 1974, I believe. Uh, and this film came out two years before the film Carrie. And I'm saying that because this is a Brian De Palma film and he also did Carrie. Carrie is where I think he started really gaining a lot of attention, although I know Phantom of the Paradise. Uh, at least nowadays, is very fondly thought of. I don't know if it was actually successful back then. Um, one of the other things to note on this, there's a character named Phoenix in the film, and her her real-life name is Jessica Harper. And I, while I was watching, I was just like, she looks so familiar, she looks so familiar. And then I looked it up on Internet Movie Database, and I was like, that's what it is. She's Susie Banyan in Suspiria. Yes, the Dario Argento original 70s Suspiria, which is a very nice film and is actually in my collection somewhere over, sorry, here, further over here. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, let's talk about this. Currently, Phantom of the Paradise is streaming on the Shutter streaming service, which, you know, a lot of the movies I'm going to be doing reviews for are on Shutter because I'm digging Shutter and they have a lot, a very good selection there. This is a no spoiler review, but. It's basically an adaptation of Phantom of the Opera. So if you know the Phantom of the Opera story, which I'm sure a lot of people do because it's been around for a very, very long time, then you basically know this film. But this film kind of takes that formula and just kind of like messes with it a whole lot, makes it a lot crazier, updates it, makes it basically a rock opera. Um, yeah, and it's nuts. This is a balls-to-the-wall film. Brian De Palma went all out. The whole thing is basically a satire of kind of the music industry and kind of um, kind of uh, party excess and music excesses and just the excesses of the 70s and kind of making fun of that. And you really see that in the film. But it blends so well with the formula of the Phantom of the Opera. So, like I was saying, if you know Phantom of the Opera, you will definitely see the parallels in this film to Phantom of the Opera. Um, I haven't seen any Phantom of the Opera movies, but I've actually gone to a live performance of the musical Phantom of the Opera, and it's good. It's a great story, and the musical's amazing because obviously they put a lot of production into it, and this film, Phantom of the Paradise, is a lot of production into that as well. It's a very good-looking film. One of the big things for me is the camera work is unbelievable in this film. Like, that's one of the things that really keeps you interested in this. It just looks so cool. And the camera work, it's doing, like, a lot of interesting things. It's taking a lot of interesting angles on characters. Like, the guy who is the Phantom of the Paradise, uh, played by William Finley, who does a pretty good job, because a lot of his acting, he had to mainly do facially under a mask. And in order to get emotions through a mask... Which, you know, it's ob it's obviously not like fully, fully covered his face, but um, it's also very, it's still very hard though. And he did a really good job with that. Um, but yeah, where was I going on that? I'm sorry, I had the side tangent on that. But um, yeah, so uh, Phantom of Paradise, uh, oh yeah, the camera work. Like they had some really interesting perspective shots on his face when he was doing his facial acting with the mask on. And it's just like stuff like that to just kept me so interested because the, the camera work isn't, it's not formulaic. It's not your typical camera work with films. Although it did remind me a little bit in the style, in the way the directing was, the way the acting was, and the way the camera work was especially, reminded me a bit of A Clockwork Orange, which is a awesome film. If you've not seen A Clockwork Orange, from the, same, uh, bleh, from, the same, from the same time period, a very good film starring Malcolm McDowell. Love that film. Um, so yeah, it reminded me a little bit of that for some reason. But it's... It's nuts, though. Like, I'm, I'm watching the film, and I'm just like, this is over the top. Like, it makes me wonder what people thought about it back in the 70s when it was released. Like, if I'm looking at it right now and thinking, man, this is really crazy and over the top, did people back in the 70s think it was even more crazy and over the top? Because crazy and over the top wasn't in its heyday back in the 70s, I don't think, as far as film goes. Uh, we've seen a lot of things over the decades, you know, being into film. And, you know, I know if you're a horror fan and you're watching this right now, you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you've seen a lot of horror films and there's a lot of nutty, crazy stuff. But uh, it didn't all originate in the 70s and before that. So I would just wonder what people's response was to this film when it came out. Because it's out there, man. It's a nutty rock opera that at times it's just like a gigantic party, especially at the end. It's like this crazy blowout. 
Um, so I have my notes on here. I want to make sure I hit everything. I just kind of take notes as I'm going through. Um, so yeah, I just said it's very stylish. It looks very stylish. It looks very polished. The directing is outstanding. A lot of the acting is really good too. And I do have to say, one of the things that really carries this film, in my opinion, is the performance of Paul Williams, the guy who plays the main villain by the name of Swan. He is a weird looking dude. He's a wacky dude. He plays his part oddly but he's also creepy and his voice his voice is this mixture of like kind of like or a little raspy a little sinister a little bit high pitched it's just really weird and just like his presence he's a great villain and I feel like the way he goes around and he's kind of like brute very brooding and all of his scenes are so good Chloe sorry my cat she did not like the film and she's voicing her opinion right now um, yeah, so just like his brooding moments, like every, every single scene with Paul Williams in it, I feel like he steals the show because he's this very cold, calculated, weird, quirky, brooding, creepy dude, and he just permeates everything, everything. And I think it's interesting because you have him on that side and then you have William Finley's character of the Phantom, Phantom of the Paradise, on the other side and they're both like wacky characters who are over the top and they are doing crazy acting in different ways and when they're like juxtaposed in the same scene it is nuts um so you're just kind of like looking over here and you're like oh my god that's nuts oh my god that's nuts that's... but it plays really well chloe seriously Psst. sorry about that <laughs> Man, she's trying to sing. She's heard the she heard these songs, Phantom of the Paradise, and she's just she's trying to belt them out too. But you know, cat language doesn't doesn't go through. Um, so yeah, uh, another one of my notes. I was just saying you'll you'll see the parallels. You'll definitely see the parallels in this with that with Phantom of the Paradise and Phantom of the Opera. Um, it, I think it's an awesome, like, fun, cool update to to Phantom of the Opera. Uh, obviously it's not like a new update because it's from the seventies, but I don't even know how old Phantom of the Opera actually is. Uh, I'm assuming it's well before the seventies cause I feel like it's been around for a long time. Um, I wrote down that it's over the top, but it's over the top in a very fun way. It's very enjoyable. There are plenty of films out there that are over the top where you're just like, this is ridiculous. Come on with this. But with this, they did that, but found a way to make it super, super fun. So Brian De Palma good job obviously he's an amazing filmmaker we all know that now but back in the 70s people didn't really know that that he was going to be that great um it's very frantic that's another thing i wrote down it moves really really quick the story moves very very quick it doesn't take its time to really establish things but i think that it gets the point through enough that it doesn't really need to take a whole lot of time so the pacing is really really good uh but at times you just feel like we're moving, we're moving, we're going. This is so frantic. Like, it's over here, and then it's over here. Um, but if you're into that type of film, which I kind of am, and I think it works really well for a rock opera, don't you? Uh, I think that, I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, yeah. And that's pretty much all my notes on it. I think the the end is so, is such a crazy sensory overload, which actually, there's a lot of really cool, um, visuals in this film, like I was kind of saying with the, with the artwork and the, or I'm sorry, the the camera work and the directing. There's so many cool visuals and the costuming actually too. Um, but in the end, like the very end scene, it's just like things are going nuts, 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 and you're kind of like sensory overload. But it's cool. It's good. It, it becomes a little psychedelic, trippy, crazy, um, which makes sense because it was the 70s. That was the time for that type of stuff. But yeah, I mean, overall, I, I did enjoy this film. I thought it was uh, it was a good time. It was a raucous time. It was a raucous film. So uh, I always do star ratings on these. So out of five stars with halves in play, I give this a four. I don't think I can go any higher than that, but I think it's well done for what it's supposed to be, and it's, it's a good time. I, I would definitely recommend it if you're watching this and you haven't seen it. If you are watching this and you have seen it, Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on Phantom of the Paradise. I know I've heard from some people online prior to me seeing this film who were like, oh my God, you have to see this film. That like, there are people who just like love, love, love this. And to me, it felt kind of similar to Rocky Horror Picture Show. So I don't know if anyone else kind of feels that way. It feels like some of the same ideas were carried over. I don't know. 
I don't think there was anyone in common between the two films, but there are some ideas that seem like they're mirrored in a sense. So, um, yeah. But anyway, thank you, everyone. Uh, put a comment down there. Let's talk. Uh, also, if you just want to say, you know, another film that's streaming on Shutter that you want me to do, uh, this one I got from doing a poll in a Joe Bob Briggs um, Driving Mutants group I'm on, in on Facebook. So shout out to that group. Um, that's why I did this film, because I did a poll for it, and this is the one that got the most votes. I'll keep doing that stuff. But people, if you have ideas for films that you think I really should do that are streaming on Shutter, put it down in the comments, um, and I'll look into it. Hit that subscribe, though, if you like this video or any video I've ever done, or you just feel appreciative that I'm doing videos because it's taking my time up. Not that I don't like it, because I do. Uh, just hit that subscribe. It can mean a lot for me, and it takes you literally a second. Totally painless. Um, you hit that notification bell, and you'll know any time a video comes out. So that. That's great. If as soon as the video comes out, you hit it, it can heart like it can help with getting traction for that video. So that's also something you could do for me. And then just spread the word. If you're if you know some other people in horror and you're like, hey, there's this dude who's doing these horror reviews, and I'm not just doing films. I've got some books. Uh, I'm gonna branch out into some other stuff and just uh, I did I did one that I was very happy with and very proud of. And if you didn't watch it, you should go back and check it out. Where I broke down the entire series of masters of horror films that were done and ranked all of them and gave just a little bit little blurb about each one of them i had a lot of fun with that but uh check that out but anyway thank you so much for checking this out and until next time keep it brutal